In a previous video, we constructed a histogram from the heights of 29 AP statistics students. And we started with a frequency table where we broke up the data into class intervals from 53 to 56 inches, etc. And then we counted how many individuals were in each of these class intervals. And these were the counts that we got for a total of 29 students. And we made a histogram that looked like this with the title axis running from 53 to 80 inches for the heights broken up into three inch class intervals and then we had the counts on the vertical axis and the histogram looked like that. What we're going to look at today are a couple more ways to uh, illustrate these data. One is by making a relative, fr relative frequency histogram. What we do here is we take each of these counts and we divide it by 29 and convert it to a percent. So 1 out of 29 represents 3.45 percent, etc. 12 out of 29 represents 41.38 percent. Now these percentages should add up to 100 and they roughly do. There's a little bit of rounding error but that's typical in situations like this. Um, we can make a histogram using these relative frequencies rather than these absolute frequencies or counts and if we do it's going to look quite similar to the preceding one. What we have here is again our height axis in inches from 53 to 80 inches broken up into three inch intervals. We've got the title up there, heights of 29 AP statistics students. And the histogram here looks almost the same as the histogram we had already. And it should. The only difference is this vertical axis. Here we have relative frequency expressed as a percent rather than count. But basically, the counts that we had before, we just divided by 29. So this is basically the same vertical axis that we had before, divided by 29. So we just changed the scale and uh, converted to percents. But the bars have the same relative heights, and they take up the same relative area, and they're proportional to the count within each of these class intervals. So the relative frequency histogram like this looks almost the same as the uh, the histogram based on counts. In fact, the only difference is the way this vertical axis right here is scaled. Another way we could look at the data is to calculate a running total, a cumulative frequency. And the way we do that is uh, we had one observation in this first interval and then no observations in the second interval. So the total of these first two intervals is still one. Um, in the third interval, we added one more, and now the running total is 2. That's 1 plus 1. In the third, fourth interval, we had one more observation. Now the running total rises up to 3. That's the previous total of 2, plus that 1 right there gives us 3. In the fifth interval, we add 6 more, and that brings our total up to 9. In the sixth interval, we have 12. That brings our running total up to 21. And then we add five more to get 26, two more gives us 28, and one more gives us 29, and that exhausts the data set. Now we can make a histogram out of these cumulative frequencies, and it looks like this. We still have height on the horizontal axis in inches, and uh, they run; those heights run from 0 to 80 inches as before. And uh, these heights are broken up into class intervals of three inches wide. On the vertical axis here, we have cumulative frequency, which runs from 0 up to uh, 29. We had one observation in the first interval, no observations in the second interval, so our running total stayed at 1. Another observation in the third interval that raised our running total to 2. One observation in the fourth interval that raised our running total to 3, etc. And the bars grow they accumulate as we go along. This bar right here, we added 12 observations to the previous total. Here we added five more to that previous total, and then two more to that total, and then finally one more to that total, and that exhausts the data set. We have 29 observations. The height of that bar is 29. Now what? You'll see something like this perhaps on your AP stats exam. There was uh, a problem that was based on a cumulative frequency histogram on the 2002 released exam. So that's something that you might see at some point in the course or on your AP exam.
Now what we're going to do next is we're going to calculate the relative cumulative frequencies and make a diagram out of those. Now these relative cumulative frequencies are basically the running totals from these relative frequencies in this column. So basically what we have in the first interval we have 3.45 percent of the total of the observations. In the second interval we don't add any so the running total stays at 3.45. In the third interval we add 3.45 percent more. Now the running total runs up to 6.90 percent. We had 3.45% more in the fourth interval. That makes our running total up to 10.34%. And these don't exactly these don't exactly add up to these numbers over here because of rounding error, but that's all right. But the running total should add up to 100% when you get to the end of the data set. After you've uh, counted all 29 observations, you should have 100% right there. Now what we're going to make out of these relative cumulative frequencies it's what they call an ogive, and uh, that is a relative cumulative frequency graph. And this graph is basically a line graph, and uh, we have on the horizontal axis, we have our heights running from 53 to 80 inches, broken up into intervals of 3 inches each. And what we're going to do is we're going to plot the relative cumulative frequencies at the end of each interval, at the right end of each of these intervals. And as we go, we'll, we'll put some dots on here and then we'll connect the dots with a line graph. So in the first interval, we had 3.45% and that gets us up to here. In the second interval, we didn't add any more. So our running total stays at 3.45%. In the third interval, we added one more and that raises our total up to 6.9%. In the fourth interval, we added one more and that raises our running total up to 10.34 percent as you can see here and then in the fifth interval here between 65 and 68 inches we're adding about uh, 21 percent and that's raising our cumulative total up to 31.03 percent and that's uh, right about here and then in the next interval we add that's the big one where we had 12 observations that adds 41.38 percent to the total, takes the total up to 72.41. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That is right here. And then in the next interval, the total runs up to 89.66. And that is about here. And then in the next interval, the total runs up to 96.55, which is here. And then in the last interval, we get to the very end of the data set, and we now have 100% of all the observations accounted for. What we're going to do is connect these dots with, uh, with lines, little line segments. So we're going to put a line segment here from this 0 up to the 3.45%. Uh, and then we're going to go straight across because in the second interval we didn't add anything to the total. In the third and fourth intervals we add about three and a half percent each. And then we take a big jump up to uh, the next one up to about 31 percent. And then we have a big jump up to about 72 percent. And then a smaller jump up to about 80 9.66 percent and then we finish this off with the last two last two jumps and there is your ogive your relative cumulative frequency graph it's a very useful graph for uh, um, calculating percentiles that correspond to particular data values and for calculating data values or estimating data, data values that correspond to percentiles. So you can think of this as maybe a percentile axis. Here's the axis that represents data values. And this curve in here, this graph, shows how those percentiles and those um, raw data values are related. And we'll look at that in more detail in, a, in another video.